China, thank you so much for letting me know about your wedding and congratulations. I know you guys don't normally come out my way, but it was nice to see the both of you. This has nothing to do with you though, Leia. I may be your daughter-in-law, but that does not give you the right to think that you need to be there for my wedding. We only came out because Jacob wanted to grab some things and just happened to let you know about the wedding. You don't have to be so distant with me anymore. I understand that you may feel that you can't be open with me, but I'm telling you that I won't bite. And by this point, it's been a year now since you married Jacob, right? So, I'm just saying that I'm happy that you two are finally going to have a wedding. And that it'd be nice if you and I could be closer. Anyway, I'll be looking forward to your guys' wedding. Hey, I'm not giving this wedding for you, Leah. <laughs> I know that you're all happy about coming, but that doesn't mean we all are. I know that, China. I'm telling you that I'm happy for the both of you and look forward to seeing those smiles on your faces. And of course, seeing your guys' faces will make me happy as well. Is that so? Then is that all you wanted to say to me now? You don't have to talk to me if it's to tell me something like that. Tell your son that and that should be enough for you, right? This is what I mean by you acting so distant with me. You don't have to keep being all negative about me, just wanting to tell you a simple message. I wanted to make sure you knew how happy I am for you two is all. Telling you that shouldn't be a problem, right? Well, if that's all you have to say, then I guess. But that should mean we could stop talking now, right? I'm busy right now, getting ready for the event. I still need to make a bunch of phone calls, as well as head to the wedding hall to prepare. Uh, one second. I have one other important thing that I'd like to talk with you about. So, just give me a bit more of your time. Come on, what else? Didn't I just tell you that I'm busy making sure the wedding is planned out? I don't have all day for you, so make this very quick. I was wondering about how you acted today when you stopped by my house earlier. It seemed that you weren't all too happy about something. And when I say that, I mean it felt as though you're holding something against me. How I acted? This is just how I normally am, so it kind of hurts hearing you say that about me. You haven't always acted like that, right? I know for a fact that you only act that way when you're around me, right? When you're with Jacob, you're a lot more polite, I'm sure. Because if you acted like that with him too, I don't think a relationship could have worked out between you both. Well, I'm his wife. I'd never act the way I do with you in front of him. <laughs> and there must be some reason behind you acting that way, right? If you don't want him to get upset with you over the way you act with me, then you should perhaps just open up a little. You can tell me anything, and I'll make sure not to take it personally. When I'm around you? No, I don't think I will open up. Listen, I don't like being around you, and so I'm not going to change the way I act. <laughs> And I know that you're a single mother, and on top of that, you're poor, so I have to be rude to you. <laughs> I mean, I can't let myself be nice to you, or you might start to think your situation as a mother is okay. Well, no, I can see that you do think it's okay to look down on me. At least that clears things up a little. Well, if that's really the way you feel about me, then I'm not going to force you to change that attitude. I do think it's a bit odd that that's the reason you're upset around me, but I'm not going to try and change your views of me. But when it comes to the wedding, can you at least be a little bit more friendly with me? Only during the wedding? Why should I be more friendly with you then? Well, because your parents will also be at the wedding, right? And Jacob's co-workers and bosses will be there as well. If you keep acting the way you have with me there, then it may create a bad image of us, and things might not turn out the way you'd like them to if everyone is concerned about you. So you're asking me to be nice to save your own pride? I never thought you had any pride to begin with, so it should have been alright for me to be rude to you. <laughs> I don't want people thinking that you're willing to disrespect your mother-in-law on your special day is all. And when it comes to Jacob... I don't think he'd like having the two of us at odds during the wedding, right? If you make yourself look bad by acting out against me, then you may only make things worse for your relationship. Yeah, I don't want to be giving everyone the wrong idea, right? 
Although, I'm sure when the other people in my family get to know you more, they'll think the same way I do about you. What? I am fine with you hating me for whatever reasons you may have. But at least during the wedding can you play nice. That's fine, right? It's not asking much for me to ask you to just act as though there's nothing between us for a few hours, right? Alright, alright, understood. I'll try my best to not be rude to you. And don't start talking back to me if I slip up once or twice. After all, you're asking me a lot more than you should be with the status you have. I'm really asking you to do this one thing for everyone. Not just me. Hopefully knowing that will help you make the right decisions. <coughs> China, do you think that you can come to the waiting room that I'm in? I want to talk with you about what just happened. No, thank you. I'm in the middle of getting my makeup done. And by the time that's over, I'll have to be ready for the wedding to start. Well, I don't mind if you come after that as long as we have a chance to talk. Just a little time will do, so can you be here soon? I don't want to, so it's not happening. And by the way, it's not normal of you to ask to talk with the bride right before the wedding is about to begin. Everyone knows that this is the most busy time for the bride, and she has a lot on her mind that doesn't involve you. So stop trying. That's right, and to be honest, I don't want to have to talk with you either right now about what happened. After all, today is supposed to be Jacob's in your big day. But you did do something that was not okay. Well, if you understand that, then you should stop trying with me. It's like you're trying to start something for no good reason. If I did something that you didn't like, then maybe you should keep it to yourself until after the wedding. Well, I want to talk with you about how you just acted with me. But it wasn't just me that you acted that way towards. You also acted rude towards Jacob's mentor. Do you not know what you've done to him? Jacob's mentor? Uh, are you talking about that old man that was standing next to you a bit ago? That guy isn't even family or close friends to me, so he shouldn't even be here. That's why I was so surprised to see him here in the first place. That man is a very busy man with all his work, yet he made time to be here for Jacob. He told me that he just wanted to stop by to at least see Jacob during his very special day. And had been planning on getting to know you a little. Yet out of nowhere, you came along and said some rude things. If you were not married to Jacob, then that would have not been okay for you. I'm sure things have made things awkward for his mentor now, and I can't seem to find him anywhere to talk with about you. Did I say something that happened to upset you and that old geezer? I don't remember a thing I said. You sure did. You said to him that he resembled me, as someone who was nothing more than a moneyless single parent living in poverty. And then you told me he should marry me since we're both poor. Even if that was just meant to be a joke, it was not appropriate to say. Well, he came during a time like this that is only meant for people that know one of the two that are getting married. And he looked too old to be associated with Jacob, so I just assumed you both were dating or something. And I assumed by the way he looked, he'd be a perfect match for a single mother like you. Wasn't it kind of me to try and get you another husband so that you wouldn't be as lonely anymore? Do not say things like that about him. That man already has a wife of his own, and they've been living together for 35 years now. And you have never seen him before, so what you said was very rude. Did you forget about what I had asked from you a few days ago? I remember you saying something about me. What was that? Something about how you always annoy me or something? I guess I don't remember it though, so it must not have been that important. Sorry. I asked you to at least act nice towards me during the wedding today. But by the way you're acting, you're going to make things very difficult for Jacob. You don't want everyone to start thinking that you don't care about everyone here today, and that you don't have any manners right. So please, stop acting so childish towards everyone and behave yourself. Alright, alright, my bad. Are you happy now? I'm telling you that your attitude right there is not okay today. Talking to you through our phones doesn't seem to be getting the message across. You're fine for time, so come over here and let me have a word with you. If you can't seem to find any time, I'll come over there and we can talk. No 
thanks. Seriously, stop trying with me today, okay? Why do I have to be the one to act nice towards you when this is my wedding to begin with? I don't need you nagging me constantly about how upset you are. Well, if you could just act like an adult, we wouldn't have to worry about each other anymore, right? I'm not going to let you act that way towards me anymore today, so please come and see me. I'll even let Jacob know that I'm asking for you to come see me. Alright then. It's not like the wedding is going to start soon anyway. And I was planning to come see you soon here as well. I'll let Jacob know and then I'll be over there to talk with you face to face. Thank you, China. <coughs> Leah, the wedding's going to start soon. I can't find you anywhere. Where did you run off to? Don't you dare act like you don't know what's going on. You're the one that had kicked me out of there, right? What? Did I really do that? I just asked that anyone who is worthless go home. I never said anything about having you thrown out of there, Leah. You had no right saying that to me. You came into that room with me and spilled coffee all over my dress. And at that point, there was nothing else I could do for myself. No, no, that was your fault for that one. I had asked that you not to worry about the wedding, but then you came here and started mouthing off to me even more. And having to listen to an old hag run her mouth really pissed me off. And after all those warnings I gave you, you still couldn't manage to see that this is due to your bad attitude, right? But that right there is really annoying. I didn't ask for you to start talking to me like that about the way I like to act. Also, when I asked that everyone worthless leave, the security must have thought you were pretty meaningless at my wedding. See, it's not just me that knows how awful of an in-law you are. Is that so? Well, I can see that I'm not going to get to you. I'm tired of trying to get you to act like a proper adult. Go ahead and act however you'd like. Sucks that you won't be able to take part in your special son's wedding today. I can see by how easily you've given up that this was a huge blow to your pride, right? I'm sure it was a huge blow. I should have handled you before this happened. I should have let Jacob know all about what you had done. Well now, you don't have to worry about that now. I'll make sure to send you some pictures of the wedding later. And that should get you to shut up. What pictures? I just told you pictures of the wedding, you idiot. You can't be telling me that Alzheimer's has caught up to you this early. China, you're still the bride today. You still can't see what's happening. The wedding has been cancelled, right? So there's going to be no photos of your wedding today. Huh? What are you talking about, Leah? I'm tired of such boring jokes. This is no joke and everything is very much reality. Maybe you could go ask Jacob, or even ask your own parents to confirm. I'm not going to fall for some blatant lie like that. It's just about time for the wedding to start now, okay? There's no way the wedding could get cancelled right now. Well, I know that you've always thought about things from your own point of view. Go ahead and keep thinking that there will be a wedding today. I don't care. I can tell that all of this is killing you right now, and that's why you're trying to scare me with that bullcrap. I'm sure you don't want to be the only person today that's miserable. You've already been thrown out because of what you did, so you can stop all the lying. All you're doing is making me hate you more and more. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. And my parents are coming my way now, so I can't sit around and waste my time with you anymore. Is that so? Thank goodness. I've gotten tired of having to listen to you talk about everything being my fault. I'll let your parents handle the rest for me. Fine, fine. I'll let you think that everything will go wrong for me. Now, I have a fun day ahead of me to attend to. You can go home or something and wait there all by yourself. When the wedding's done, I'll let you know. <coughs> wait, the wedding is actually being cancelled right now. And worse is that both Jacob and my parents are furious with me. What the hell were you thinking lying to them about me? What the hell were you thinking, spilling coffee on your mother-in-law, and then having her kicked out of your wedding? Huh? You just ruined my wedding and think you get to blame me for that? Everything is ruined now because of you coming today. But from the beginning, the whole reason this happened is because of you, right? There's no reason you should be trying to blame anyone else for the way you acted. And I never lied to any of them about you. What the hell do you mean? 
If it wasn't you that started talking crap about me, then why does everyone know what happened? I'm sure that other people wondered where I went and so they started looking for me. And I'm sure that someone saw that I was covered in coffee and on my way out of the building. Actually, one person did ask me where I was going and I told them what had happened before the door closed on me. So you did start lying to someone about this? Lying about what? I had coffee spilled all over my head and back by you. And my dress and hair were proof of that. There's no way you were going to hide all that you'd done to me from everyone there. When that happens, you should be dead inside and let things be. I just covered you in coffee and ruined your dress, so you should have known you'd been defeated and that there was nothing else you could do. You knew that this was your son's wedding, right? How would you do something to ruin that for him? You're a terrible mother. Well then, what was the point of spilling coffee on me? If you didn't want to make a scene, you should have just came and spoke to me like an adult. I told you that all you had to do was act kind to everyone today, but you couldn't help yourself. Anyway, the person that saw me on the way out and asked what had happened was your mom. So I had no choice but to tell the truth. And why did you think I'd never talk about something like this? I'm the one that's pissed now. Yet you keep trying to talk to me like I'm in the wrong. Who do you even think you are? You're just some old hag living in poverty, while I actually have money and am saving your son from living in the shadows like you. You're asking me who I think I am? I think that I'm your mother-in-law. Actually, I know I am. And that's why I was being kind and caring for you by warning you to not act out of line today. If you would have just stayed quiet today and acted like someone who was happy to be married, then you would have never had to see your wedding fall apart. So what? Did you think I'd be thankful for telling me to be kind after all you did to me? I don't want you to be thankful, rather I just wanted you to heed my warnings. And I wasn't even asking you to be careful about anything so far out of line. Well, if you only wanted that, the next time maybe keep your mouth quiet. Who do you think is to blame for all of this? Take responsibility for it right now. To make sure something like this would never happen, I tried my best to warn you. And yet you were the one that ignored me, right? I guess I should have tried harder to make sure that you could act like an adult before all of this, because you obviously don't know how to yourself. But even with that thought in my head, I will not be responsible for what you did. Stop screwing around! I just lost the most important moment of my life. And now they're saying that I'll have to pay for the whole thing. And the next wedding isn't going to be free either, Leah. And who will that next wedding be with? With Jacob, of course. But because of this, we're not going to let you come. <laughs> have you not heard anything from him yet? He already told me that he's going to be divorcing you. What? Divorcing me? I had been trying so hard to stop that from happening for a while now. But since he thinks this is the right choice, I won't tell him otherwise. Wait, hold on a minute. Why, why does he want to get a divorce at a time like this? If you took a second to think about what you've done, you'd understand why. Aren't your parents really upset with you now as well? And they told you that you'd have to pay for the whole wedding yourself, right? I didn't think they were being serious though. How much will that all cost me? I don't have enough to pay for all of this. Well, in the divorce, you'll also have to split properties, right? Maybe you can get some money in that, depending on what the lawyer thinks. I'm not even saying that I'm okay with being divorced. So, there's no way he can just do it without my permission. Do something to stop all of this. I had tried to do something to stop this earlier as your mother-in-law. But you looked down on me and never once listened to a word I said about being a bit less rude to me. So there's nothing else I'm going to do for you now. It'll all fall on deaf ears anyways. But you should be trying to do something as my in-law. Your daughter-in-law is in trouble, so you have to help me. You think that, but take a look at your own parents. They have no plans of helping you, so why would I when I'm not even related to you by blood? They aren't going to help me? What do you mean? They're planning on cutting ties with you. They told me that you're not welcome back to their house after the divorce. You're kidding, right? Then what should I do now? Why don't you think about that yourself? Before you have to ask a single mother anything, let's see what you can do on your own. 
If you cannot figure anything out, then that means you're worse than me, right? <coughs> After that, Jacob and China became divorced. It was a rough road getting there, but after China's parents forced her to go meet with Jacob's lawyer and talk about all the details, there was nowhere left for her to run. She had tried to plead that this was all due to me bullying her, but Jacob could see through her lies and made it clear that he no longer loved her, and that is what made her realize she had lost. But even though she was no longer married to Jacob, she still had a long and terrible road ahead of her. As her parents had said before, the whole wedding and the cancellation fees had to be paid by her and only by her. And luckily for her, she was able to get enough from Jacob in the divorce due to the splitting of their properties and money, and could pay it all off without having to take out any sort of borrowed money. But because she spent every last penny she had on that wedding, she no longer had enough to pay for herself to live. She had always been a housewife for Jacob while he worked, and so she never had any money of her own to begin with. And on top of being moneyless, she also had no home to go back to, and so she was really in between a rock and a hard place. I may no longer be her mother-in-law, but after seeing how far she's fallen after disregarding my warnings to her, I only hope that she'll find a way to grow up and squeeze her way out of this very narrow hole that she's found herself in. Hey, Spencer. I bet your pleased work's over. Will you be coming straight home? Rose, listen, babe. I'm real sorry. What's wrong? Did they give you overtime again? And my coworker Katie called in saying a kid was sick today? It doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to get away anytime soon. Katie? She was the one with the little boy, right? Yeah, that's her. Apparently her son has a fever and won't stop coughing. There's a good chance she has whatever it is, too. The last thing we need in our hands is another pandemic. I never want to hear the word. I never want to hear the word lockdown again. Long story short, she took the day off. Oh, I see. I can't say I'm not disappointed with that being Christmas week and all. I know you work in a care home, but I thought you said your hours would be going down around this time. I prepared a huge dinner for us. I'm so sorry, babe. They were supposed to be reducing our hours, but. It's so much unexpected crap pop up over the last few days you wouldn't believe. I tell you what, I'll definitely get off early tomorrow. I wouldn't miss Christmas Day with you for the world. Really? But how do you know you'll be able to? Won't Katie still be off? Well, there's a will, there's a way. Leave it with me. <laughs> I'm so happy to hear that. Thank you, sweetie. I've been working hard on my end too, you know. Something tells me this Christmas year's dinner will blow your mind. Get excited. Go cool, on, can't we? You have been really busy lately, though. What exactly is it? Is everything okay? Oh, you know, just some things here and there. Anyway, aren't you going to be pretty busy yourself? I remember you saying things pick up for you at work around New Year. Sure, but I've been carefully planning out my schedule since last month to make sure we still have plenty of us time. This is going to be our first new year together since getting married, after all. It'd be a crime not to enjoy it to the fullest. And it'd be such a shame to have what should be a special time ruined by some boring old work. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Anything on New Year's Eve? You said you were gonna message your mom? Yeah, about that. It's looking like I probably won't get the day off. What? Work again? But I thought you were supposed to be finishing up on the 28th. That was the plan, uh, but things have changed. Katie being off through a huge spanner in the works. Best case scenario, I'm in till late evening. I can't guarantee I'll make it back in time for the celebrations. I see. Does that mean we're not going over to your mom's anymore? I hate to say it, but yeah, I told we're not going to be able to make it this year. Sorry, babe. I could hardly expect you to go on your own. Hmm, I guess you're right. It might have been a little awkward with just me there. Don't get me wrong, I think your mom and dad are great. They're super kind, but I'm still kind of nervous around them. Right? How about you go back and see your own folks for New Year's instead? Wait, what? You mean we're gonna spend it apart? What choice do we have, babe? Best case scenario, I get home late. Worst case scenario, I don't make it back till you're fast asleep. Wouldn't you rather be with your parents instead of waiting around for me on your own when I might not even make it in time. 
You'd be bored and lonely. I'd feel bad. I could always do a big clean to keep myself occupied. Nah, let's save that for my next day off. We could do it together, it'll be fun. Your next day off? <laughs> yeah, right. You don't get days off anymore. Even when you're supposed to. The boss ends up calling you in. That's cool. My next day off will be fine. Katie should be back by then, so they'll have everything covered without me. Won't you be sad? I was so looking forward to us spending our first New Year's together. Sure I will, but I'll still have a big smile on my face and I think about how we're going to spend the rest of our lives together. I'll never let you escape, babe. I hope you know that. You're mine forever. I guess. It's always next year. I'll make sure we definitely spend it at my folks' house then. And we'll celebrate with twice as much beer to make it for the last time. It makes way more sense for you to spend it with your mom and dad this time around. You know, they love having you there. Besides, they're not going to be around forever, you know? That applies to your parents too, Spencer. Exactly! That's why we should make the most of the time we have with our folks while we can. So how about it, honey cheeks? Turn that frown upside down and go see your folks, okay? Um... Fine. I'll spend New Year's at my mom and dad's place then. I guess I may as well make the most of it and get my mom to teach me how to cook her famous roast. That's the spirit. I've never tried your mom's roast, but I gotta admit, I start salivating every time I hear you talk about it. My mom's cooking, on the other hand, sucks. <laughs> she always uses ready-made stuff. But she buys quality, right? Is it really that different to making it from scratch? You bet it is. You'll see when you try my mom's roast next year. I can't wait, babe. Next year's new year is gonna be a blast. <laughs> Hold your horses, sweetie. It's a little while away yet. Let me know if anything changes with work, okay? Who knows? Maybe there will be a miracle and we'll still be able to make it to your mom and dad's place in time. You know, to watch the countdown together. Sure thing. You said it yourself though, babe. It's like a miracle. I'd love it if we could, but don't get your hopes up. Spencer, you're late again today. Are you still mad about Christmas Day? Come on, babe, I apologize for that already. But you promised to make it home on time. Not only were you late, but you didn't even message me. Did they confiscate your phone at work now? I was so worried. I thought maybe you got into an accident or something. I know it was wrong of me, babe. I'm sorry. I was so focused on trying to get everything done early, I lost track of time and forgot to check my phone. So that's why you didn't reply to my messages? Sorry. As if that wasn't bad on its own. You didn't even eat any of the Christmas dinner I slaved for hours over a hot stove to cook. Do you have any idea how many weeks of preparation went into that? I had no appetite because I was so tired. I was, it was the middle of the night when I finally got back. Oh, please babe, can we just move past this already? I know I should have let you know, but even if I did, I had no choice but to stay late. Work is work, what can I do? To be honest, I'm kind of getting sick of you whining at me for stuff I have no control over. What do you expect? Broken promises are a daily occurrence with you these days. I feel like I can hardly believe a word you say anymore. Looks like I'm going to be doing this big New Year cleanup on my own. What do you want me to do? God, you're such a pain in my backside lately. What happened to you? What do you want from me, woman? Should I tell my boss to stick it up his ass and lose my job? I'd have nothing but free time then. Is that what you want, huh? Is it? You speak to me like you your... You speak to me like you're my freaking mom. I'm doing my best to put bread on the table and all you do is complain. I have a job of my own, you know. It's not like I don't work hard myself. We both put bread on a table because we both work full time. It's a team effort. Or at least it's supposed to be. Sure, when things are hectic for one of us, the other should be there to offer support. I get that. But you've been leaving me to do all of the housework by myself for months now. You do know I do literally everything around the house, don't you? I know there's no way you haven't noticed. I'm heckin' busy, Rose. And once again, Spencer, so am I. Do you have any idea how champ-packed my schedule was from last month until just before Christmas? I cramped everything into the halftime. It normally take me so me and you could spend the holiday season together. Mine and your jobs are not the same, babe. 
I can't believe it even can bear them. What's that supposed to mean? It's a well-known fact that men work at least ten times harder than women. What's the problem with you doing a little housework here and there if you have more free time than me? You said it yourself as supposed to be a team effort, but you seem dead set on making me play solo. Why am I even wasting my breath? You just don't get it. Jesus, Spencer. Is there really any need to speak to me like that? You're the one acting belligerent. Would it kill you to be there to support your husband while he's out working back-breaking hours to bring home the bacon? Would it, huh? Huh? Please calm down. I want to be there to support you. But you only come home to sleep these days. What the heck's wrong with that? Obviously I'm gonna spend less time at home when things are crazy at work. I don't mind picking up the slack at home when you're busy with work, Spencer. That's not what upsets me. What upsets me is the fact that you don't even seem to care. You speak to me with such coldness and disdain, I feel like I barely recognize you anymore. What happened to the kind loving man I married? I'm right here, babe. It's me, your big girly teddy bear. I'm doing this because I care. I'm super grateful for you doing the housework. I thought that was obvious, but I guess I have to actually tell you. Jeez, we've almost been married a whole year now. I thought you'd understand me by now. You never used to speak to me like dirt. God damn it, here we go again with the victim bullshit. I can't take any more of this. Fine, I'm the bad guy and everything wrong with your life is my fault. Happy now? Uh, that's not what I'm saying. Seriously, Spencer, what's going on with you? Did something happen? Nope, I'm bound to run out of patience eventually when you constantly harp on at me about Christmas like this. No, it's not just Christmas. Something about you changed before that. No way, you're imagining it. God, no, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have spoken to you like that. To tell you the truth, babe, I'm hella stressed working all these hours. I let my emotions get the better of me. You're bound to be stressed out working this much. You're only human. It's not healthy to overdo it like this. You haven't had a day off in months. You're right. Sorry, babe, I'm calm now. Listen, I think I can book a day off for early next year, so... Let's make some time to spend together then, okay? Let's just chill out together for a change. Uh, that sounds great, sweetie. I think some relaxation time to shake off the stress off this year is just what we both need. I'll rustle you up some food to heal your worn-out body and mind. Sorry I spoiled the atmosphere the day before you're gonna see your folks. <laughs> it's fine, sweetie. You're right. I should have been more understanding. You're stressed and the last thing you needed was me on your case over things you can't help. I'm sorry too. I guess we both overstepped the mark a little, huh? What do you say? Should we make up? My shift tomorrow starts a little later than usual, so we can spend some time together in the morning while you get ready for work and I can see you off. In fact, you know what? How about I drive you to the station? Thanks. I'd really like that. If you want to relax at home before I work, I really don't mind taking the bus though. Good luck with work. Spencer, I just got home. Where are you going? Sorry, I went to my folks' place. What? My mom said I should come over for some food if I was on my own. You said yourself you might not be able to make it back tonight because of all the snow, right? I thought I may as well stay a while since I was going to drop by and say hi anyway. I told you very clearly I'd be coming home early today. Sure you did, but one man's early is another man's late. How was I supposed to know when you meant? Forget it, it's fine. You'll be home soon if you're only staying for some food, right? Listen, babe, the thing is, I can't make it home tonight. Why not? My mom said I have to stay over at her place. I'll be home tomorrow. Besides, I had a few beers so I can't drive anymore. Sorry. I'll be home before noon tomorrow. <laughs> this is strange. Something doesn't quite add up. So you're telling me you're with your mom and dad at their house right now, even though your mom and dad are sleeping here tonight? Just whose house are you staying at tonight, Spencer? What? My folks are staying at our place. Yeah, your mom and dad are sat here with me right now, so I bought a bunch of food over. Don't even joke about stuff like this. You know, I actually believed you for a sec there. <laughs> As if my parents do that without telling me. I'm telling the truth. They can see every message you sent me. 
They agreed not to tell you. The plan was to throw you a surprise party for when you got back. Really? Yes, really. Why else would I be saying it? Well, where are you? What are you doing? <coughs> How about picking up the phone? Um, well, you see, the thing is, uh, I'm out drinking with my buddies right now. Sorry, babe. So? Why does that mean you can't answer the phone? Well, uh, can you give me a few minutes? Surely you can manage a quick phone call. Sorry, listen, babe, but the thing is, I'm really drunk. Why do you have to lie? I'd appreciate it if you told me the reason. Going out drinking with your buddies doesn't mean you have to stay the night. You could easily get a taxi. I know, but I thought you'd be mad at me. Where are you right now? Your dad says he'll come pick you up in the car. No, 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 that w won't be necessary. I can make it home on my own. How? You're too drunk to drive. I'll get my buddy who doesn't drink to bring me. Uh, just sit tight and wait for me to get back, okay? Won't be long. No, we're going to do a video call, and you're going to show me your surroundings right now. If you don't answer my next call, we're done. I'm done listening to your bullshit excuses. Your mom and dad can't wait to see you either. They say they want to hear what you have to say for yourself. <coughs> There's something I need to talk to you about, Spencer. Have you decided to forgive me? No. Please come home soon, baby. You know this has all been a huge misunderstanding, right? I only lied because I knew it might look bad, and I didn't want to make you think I was doing anything I shouldn't have been. Which part am I misunderstanding? You were at your co-worker Katie's house. Were those rose petals on the bed in the background on the video call? Sure I was, but it wasn't what it looked like, babe. I swear. How many times have I got to say if you to believe me? Me and her were just friends, it's not what you think. She has a kid for crying out loud. Isn't she a single mom? <laughs> I guess it wouldn't be weird if she was lonely. But I never imagined in a million years you and her would... No, it's not like that. I swear on my life. I'm not cheating on you, baby. I, I love you and no one else. Katie told you herself, right? That kid really likes me. He was begging me to stay and I would have felt bad leaving him. That's all. No matter which way you look at it, it doesn't add up. Why would a married man be at his single co-worker's house on a New Year's Eve, drinking wine on a bed covered in rose petals in a candlelit room? You and Katie have been having it away behind my back, haven't you? Do you seriously think I can forgive you for this? God, why does everything have to be sexual with you? Katie's a sensitive girl, so she likes to set the scene, so what? Surely you don't actually think I'd cheat on you with someone with a kid. What does her having a kid having to do with anything? You wanted to screw her, so you screwed her. No, no, no. I could never do that with some other kid. He's nearly seven years old. Surely you don't actually think I'd want to play stepdad to some little brat I don't even know. Like, like I need that kind of hassle in my life. Besides, I have you. Why would I need anyone else? But the plan was to divorce me and marry her, wasn't it? No, no way. You're dead wrong. Not only does she come with the baggage of a seven-year-old kid, but just think about it, babe. Katie might be the same age as us, but she went through childbirth. That does things to your body, like I'd ever go for someone that saggy. Wow, you're horrible. You made Katie cry. Huh? Wait, what? I'm with her right now. No way, you're lying. Have I ever lied to you? Your mom and dad really were in the house with me before, right? Was I lying then? This might be hard for you to believe, but some of us have morals. Unlike you, I don't lie every five seconds. I'm sorry? Does that mean you finally admit? Not that it makes any difference if you do. Katie already told me you two have been seeing each other for the last six months. Score! Now I have all the proof of the affair I need. We'll be discussing this through our lawyers from now on. The divorce, I mean. Rose, I was never serious about Katie. It kind of just happened. She said she was struggling with some stuff at work. Uh, 
I felt bad for her, so I said she could talk to me if she wanted, but one thing led to another and we got carried away. So that's why you cheated on me? You think that magically gets you off the hook? At least now, I finally know why you've been coming late from work all this time. You were over at her place. I promise I'll never see her again. She no longer exists as far as I'm concerned. Do whatever you want. We're getting a divorce. It's not my problem anymore. Rose, please just wait. Can we talk things through? Please just give me a chance. <laughs> a chance? A chance for what? A chance to prove how much I care about you. I promise I'll never betray you again. You had plenty of chances to prove you cared about me, but you were more than happy to treat me like crap when I didn't know about the affair. Take Christmas, for example. You spent it with Katie, didn't you? You've got some nerve to claim you care about me after lying and treating me like I didn't even exist for months on end so you could go off to your lover girl's house. But me and her are done now, finished. Like I just told you, we'll never see each other again. I don't care anymore. You had plenty of chances and you blew them all away. The only thing now is divorce. I worked so hard to make things easier for you because I thought you were swamped with work. I know now what a fool I have been. I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry, baby. I know I'm a dirtbag. Please don't leave me. I'm begging you. You're the one who left me, Spencer. It was all nothing but lies. A relationship is built on a solid foundation of trust, and you bulldozed ours. I can never believe another word that comes out of your mouth. How could I possibly spend another second of my life with someone like you? <laughs> After that, me, Spencer, and both of our lawyers got together to discuss divorce, which was finalized quickly without any issues. He clung to the marriage desperately, refusing to accept his fate, but I had mountains of evidence of the affair, and not a single person had his back. Eventually, he signed the papers through gritted teeth with a tear in his eye. I heard his mom and dad told him he was no longer their son and to never show his face at their house again. He was forced to pay both me and Katie a hefty sum in compensation. I found this out during the divorce proceedings, but apparently, right from the get-go, he gave her false hope that they had a future together by filling her head with lies about how committed he was to her and her son. Apparently, even adoption was mentioned. Katie told me he would never gotten involved with him if she knew he was playing her. Still, cheating is cheating. She was forced to pay me compensation too, and my bank balance has never looked happier. She was furious when he made all those horrible comments about her body to me in those messages. Seething with rage, she told everyone at the care home where they work about their relationship while Spencer was on shift. He flipped out with the questions of, Is it true, Spencer? Started flooding him from his co-workers. He stormed into the cafeteria and started yelling at Katie like he'd been possessed by a demon. After which the row to end all rows unfolded in front of virtually the entire workforce. With that, the shameful two became the talk of the workplace and it was obvious they weren't going to be able to carry on working together. Within days, They'd both been moved to different care homes. Oh yeah, they got demoted for arguing in front of everyone. Sadly for him, his reputation within the company already preceded him at the new workplace, and his new co-workers all knew about his ignoble shenanigans. Lastly, I heard he's currently on leave for depression, unable to bear the shame and regret of it all. He'll probably quit before long. Not that I care. He's not my problem anymore. I'd like to think he'll use this time to take a long hard think about his behavior and change for the better, but I'm not holding my breath. I felt a little emotionally unstable during the weeks after the divorce. Between the shock of finding out my husband was a rat and the relief of being rid of him, my head was in a strange place, but I'm blessed to have an amazing support network of friends and family, and thanks to their gentle, kind encouragement. I think I'm slowly returning back to my bright, cheerful old self. It would be easy to be down in the dumps over what happened to me, but if you ask me, 
I dodged a bullet by finding out who he really was before I wasted any more time with him. Life is all about perspective. I'm not ready to look for love again just yet. My focus right now is being kind and patient with myself and allowing my heart the time it needs to heal. But I'm still human, so I'm sure I want to meet that special someone eventually. I'm going to build myself up into the best version of myself I can possibly be so that when I do meet Mr. Wright, he won't be able to resist. Peter, are you almost home? Yeah, sorry for being late. I'm almost home. I'm about to get on the train. Okay, I know you're busy, but can't you come home a bit earlier? My due date is next week, and it's really hard for me to move around. I also have to look after Aiden. I would appreciate some help. Sorry. I'll make sure to finish work earlier tomorrow. I'll try to stay at home as much as I can so that I can help you. Really? Didn't you say the same thing last week? Believe me, Maggie. I'm gonna promise you this time. I've been telling my co-workers that you're almost due. I was actually working until late at night so that I can make sure to stay at home when you give birth. Thanks, Peter. I'm lucky to have a supportive husband. Nah, don't thank me. You've got a big responsibility to handle. The baby's going to be our second child. Yeah, Aiden's gonna be a big brother. But I never expected my second pregnancy to be so hard. When I was pregnant with Aiden, I was relatively healthy. Yeah, you've been feeling sick recently. I was definitely younger when I gave birth five years ago. <laughs> I think I was healthier back then. When I was chasing after Aiden, who was running around the house this morning, I was panting so hard, I had to give up catching him. Are you feeling okay, Maggie? I felt better after I took a short break. But I think I have a headache. How about you visit the hospital tomorrow? Should I? I don't think it's a big deal. I'll see if my headache gets worse and decide tomorrow. That's a good idea. If you feel sick, be sure to visit the hospital, okay? How's Aiden? Is he asleep? Yeah, he's fast asleep. He really looks like an angel while he sleeps. He turns into a monster when he wakes up. <laughs> He's an energetic kid. I guess he wants to play a few more. I've been unable to play with him like I used to after I got pregnant. I bet he can't wait to play with his little sister. Hopefully you can play with him a lot while I'm at the hospital. Are you taking a week off? Yep, I've already told my boss about it. I'll take him to many fun places. Of course, I'll visit you at the hospital, too. We'll get really busy after our baby is born, so be prepared, all right? You'll have to help me with housework, okay? I know, I know. I won't let you suffer alone. Really? I think I'm the only one doing all the housework for the past few years. Sorry, Maggie. I'm not my old self anymore. Are you almost home? Have you arrived at the station? Yeah, I'll be home in a few minutes. I'll warm up dinner for you. Be careful on your way home. <coughs> hey, Peter. How's Eden doing? Have you eaten lunch? Yep. Your mother made some delicious lunch today. We just had a quick bath. Oh, alright. Sorry. I never expected to be hospitalized this early. We were lucky we realized that you were sick before it was too late. I guess your headache was one of your symptoms. I think so too. I was also a bit nauseous, so I thought it was a part of my morning sickness. But the doctor told me it wasn't. Apparently, I was really sick. Thanks for the advice to go see the doctor. I knew something was wrong. You should be extra careful when you're pregnant. Now I have to be hospitalized before my planned date. Are you sure you can take care of Aiden while I'm away? Yep. There's only two more weekdays to go. I'll be able to stay home on the weekends. I've asked to extend the childcare hours, 
so I'm planning to pick him up after I'm done with work. There's a few days left until your due date anyways. Don't worry too much about us, okay? Your mother also offered to take care of Aiden when she's free. That's a relief. By the way, can you bring me my packed bags tomorrow? I haven't bought anything with me, because I never expected to be hospitalized today. Okay, no problem. I might visit you late in the night because I have work tomorrow. I'll take Aiden with me to see you. He keeps on asking when you're coming home. I want to reassure him that you're okay. I bet he's worried about me. I told him that you're preparing to give birth to his little sister. I'm not sure if he understands so. <laughs> he's already five. He should have a vague idea of what's going on. Oh, Peter. I wanted to talk to you about something. Do you remember me asking you to take Aiden somewhere fun on the weekends? But it seems like the weather's not so good. Huh? Really? I'll try to find somewhere Aiden could play indoors. Going out might be difficult. We can't be 100% sure. But the news said the weather is going to be really bad. It's going to be a chilly weekend with pouring rain. Alright. Maybe it's better to stay at home. Yeah. Aiden won't be able to move if it's thundering outside. Is he still afraid of thunder? Yeah, he's scared of the loud sound it makes. When it's thundering out, be sure to give him a cuddle. Don't take videos and make fun of him, okay? Hey, I know better than that. It's getting late. I think I'll brush Aiden's teeth and get him to sleep. Okay, thanks. Take good care of him, okay? If you have any problems, you can contact my mom anytime. Got it. Don't worry too much about this, Nagy. Get some good rest at the hospital. Mom, I'm sorry I wasn't able to pick up your calls. I'm getting my dinner served right now. Everyone in my room is eating too, and I don't want to disturb them, so I'll call you back later. Maggie, how are you feeling? I'm feeling much better. No major symptoms. My health hasn't fully restored yet, though. I guess I shouldn't have moved too much while I was pregnant. Maggie, stay calm and listen. Huh? Uh, what's the matter? Is something wrong? Maybe it's not the best time to tell you this when you're about to give birth to your second baby, but I think you should get a divorce. Huh? Divorce? With Peter? Mom, <laughs> what's going on? Can I get an explanation? Your son visited us, soaking wet. He said his father kicked him out. Huh? It's pouring outside. It was also thundering a few minutes ago. He was crying when he arrived. He ran here after he was locked out of the house. It takes more than 15 minutes by foot to get here. Aiden's still five. I wonder how long it took for him to get here. And I don't think I can ever forgive Peter for what he did to Aiden. I... I don't understand. I just texted Peter an hour ago, but he told me that he was cooking dinner with Aiden. Oh, really? Hold on for a second. Dad and Aiden just finished taking a bath. We didn't want him to catch a cold. Is Aiden okay? Is he hurt? Is he still crying? He's calm now, so don't worry. Aiden told us that a woman visited his house before his father kicked him out. A woman? I'm gonna go visit Peter's house to check what's going on. Wait, Mom. Come and get my keys at the hospital. If the doors are locked, you won't be able to enter our house. That's true. I'll be on my way to the hospital. I'm so sorry, Mom. I didn't want to depend too much on you. Why would you apologize? I have to apologize for telling you something shocking when you have to be well-rested at the hospital before you give birth. I didn't know if I should tell you this, but if I was you, I would have wanted to know. So I 
decided to tell you. Thanks for telling me about this, Mom. I would have wanted to know, too. Can't let Aiden suffer alone. Are you okay, Maggie? I'm okay. I have to stay strong. But there's nothing I can really do right now. No, Maggie. You can comfort Aiden. Call him later when you have time, okay? I'll find out the truth about Peter. Just focus on supporting Aiden and safely delivering your baby for now. Hey, Maggie. I heard you've already given birth to our baby. Can I go and visit to see the baby? How dare you ask me that after what you did to us? I also want to apologize about my affair. Stop it. Don't you ever bring that up at a maternity hospital. I'm really sorry. It's all my fault. Of course it's your fault. I was really looking forward to meeting the baby, believe me. While you're having an affair? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous! It's true that I was having an affair. But I thought I already ended the relationship with her. I told her beforehand it was a temporary relationship while you were pregnant. We agreed that we would end our relationship as soon as you gave birth. When my mom visited you after Aiden told her about your affair, she saw you and your lover naked. What the hell were you thinking, kicking Aiden out of the house? We don't need a father like you. I thought your mother told you that there was a misunderstanding. My ex-lover, Jessica, suddenly visited me. She started begging that she didn't want to end our relationship. I was trying to persuade her, but she said she wanted one last memory. So, you admit that you were having an affair with her when Mom visited? I didn't want to! But you did it. You are to be blamed in the first place for having an affair with her. According to what your lover told my mom, you've been meeting her almost every single day while I was pregnant. I'm sorry. I can't believe you were seeing her when I was sick. I texted you to come home early so many times. You always replied saying you had work. But turns out that was a lie. I'm really sorry. I'm a jerk. Yes, but what I hate most about you is how you locked Aiden out of the house. It was cold and pouring outside that day, and it was even thundering. You knew Aiden was afraid of thunder. How can you kick your own son out of the house in such a condition? No, you're misunderstanding. I told Aiden to wait in the car, but I think the car door was locked. It's definitely your fault, isn't it? I was scared Jessica might hurt Aiden. I was trying to protect him from her in my own ways. But you're the one who ended up hurting him the most. While Aiden cried outside, you were enjoying having an affair with her. Aiden desperately ran to my parents' house, scared and cold. How long do you think it took him to get there? How scared do you think he felt while he ran on his own? He might have gotten involved in an accident too. You don't understand how serious this is. I'm really sorry, Maggie. Do you think an apology would solve anything? I'm never going back to her house. Let's get divorced right now. Divorce? Are you serious? You just gave birth to our daughter. So what? You don't deserve to be her daughter. This was a special case. A special case? It's all because you had an affair and cheated on me. I'll never do it again. I promise. My family is the most important thing in my life. I never took my relationship with Jessica seriously. I clearly told her that I want to end our relationship. So what? It doesn't matter to us now. I'm a guy. Isn't it natural? It wasn't even a proper relationship. We just had an affair to fulfill our sexual desires. That's called cheating, Peter. Your lover isn't a prostitute, is she? Honestly? I would have preferred you to fulfill your sexual desires with a prostitute. 
How can you ever say that family is the most important thing in your life? It creeps me out. Please forgive me. I will never betray you again. Give me another chance. I don't think I can believe your words, Peter. Jessica showed me what you texted here. You've been telling her about you didn't want to go home because it was tiring to be with me and to take care of Aiden. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw your text. You got what you want. You no longer have to come home. I didn't mean it. Then why would you ever text her that? If Jessica wasn't important to you, why would you have to lie that you didn't want to go home? I just went with the flow. Jessica works for the same company. She's my colleague. I had to maintain a good relationship with her at work. You have more important things to consider about. You were just being selfish. Do you realize that? You cheated on me by having an affair with your colleague while I was pregnant, trying to fulfill your sexual desires and escaping from your daily chores as a father. You just decided on your own that it was a temporary relationship until I gave birth. I don't think I would want you to be my husband, nor the father of my children. It'll be hard to take care of two young children as a single parent. I am fully aware of that. You definitely made my life harder. But my parents and your parents have offered to help me. So I'm not alone. There's many people who are willing to support me. I'm going to ask you to pay child support as well. I don't want my children to experience any hardships because of our divorce. Says who? If you think so, I bet you'll pay us a lot of money then. The more money, the better. It'll definitely help us overcome our hardships in life. Why can't we live together as a family? I promise to help you with the housework and to take care of our children. I value my family more than anything. I can't bear to live with you as a family anymore. You sounded like you cared about us. You sounded sorry that you weren't able to help me with housework. But I realized that you were acting to be a good husband and father this whole time. I was really worried about you. If you were really worried about me, I don't think you would visit your lover while I was sick. You don't make any sense at all. I'm really sorry for everything I did, Maggie. I promise to be a great husband and father. I've become my new self. So please, let's not get divorced. I remember you saying the same thing, but you never changed. You're all talk. Can't believe you anymore. I don't need a husband who only pretends to be nice nor a father who doesn't cherish his children. Now you're free to enjoy as many affairs as you want. There's no one stopping you from doing so. <coughs> After the incident, we, including both of our parents, gathered to discuss the child support and the division of property. Peter still seemed reluctant about getting a divorce. But all of us had our mind made up about our divorce so never listened to his request. He finally agreed to sign the documents, and we officially got divorced. For the case of Jessica, she believed that Peter would come back to her after getting a divorce. So she happily provided me with the proof of their affair. Nevertheless, it turned out that Peter wanted to completely break relations with her. So they ended up going separate ways. Jessica was so angry about Peter breaking up with her she spread rumors about their secret affair to her colleagues and even started stalking Peter, waiting for him in front of his house when he refused to meet her. In the end, he asked his company for a transfer and escaped to the rural regions. I honestly think he deserves it. And now that he moved far away, he rarely comes to meet his children, which is lucky for me. As long as he pays for child support and the education fees, there is nothing I would ask for more. After I left the hospital, I moved in with my parents. I've been spending very busy days looking after both of my children. 
It's quite challenging to look after both Aiden and our newborn daughter. But with the help of the people around me, I've been able to live a peaceful and healthy life. When I first found out about Peter cheating on me, I was devastated and I couldn't even eat properly out of shock. But my children was always there for me, giving me all their love. I promised myself to protect them at all costs as their mother. I think we'll face more hardships in the future, but I know we'll be able to overcome them as a family. Supporting each other and working together. I'm confident that we'll be the happiest family in the world. Even without a father, I'll be the best parent they can be proud of. Hey, Tony. I put together a box of vegetables from our garden. Should be coming to you in a day or so. I had some for dinner last night. They came out so much better than last year. Hey, Stacy. Thanks. What did you like best? The asparagus was a success. For once. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to it. I appreciate you sending them. Price of the vegetables have gone up so much this season, so it really helps. I agree, it's become very expensive these days. But you have a good selection of supermarkets near you, right? Make sure you eat your vegetables. Yeah, but, you know, cost of living in general is expensive where we live, so, uh... Is it that bad? I can send you more, you know. I only put in nice-looking ones in the box, but here I have a bunch of odd shapes and damaged ones that I keep for myself. Really? Yes, I definitely want them. That'll be so helpful. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I being too greedy? No, not at all. But, Tony, are you guys having difficulty getting by? You have a pretty good job, and it's just you and Andrea. Well, we spent a good portion of our savings for our wedding, and Andrea can't work because she has health issues, so I have to work for the both of us. Oh, right. She has her condition. I guess that makes it hard for her to work part-time, too, then. That's right. But hey, I don't mind working hard for my family. I married Andrea knowing a health issue, so I don't expect her to work. I've also been studying to start a side business in the near future, so I can make more money. Wow, a side business? That's amazing. But don't push yourself too hard. You're still new to married life. You have a long road ahead of you. Take good care of yourself. You have to eat healthy and sleep well. I know, sis. I won't do anything unhealthy. Oh, I forgot I had a bunch of fruit in my fridge that I got from my neighbor. I should have put some in the box. I can put them in another box and mail it now. It's okay, Stacy. No rush. Some other time is perfectly fine. Oh, sorry. I need to get back to work now. Okay. Let me know when you really need help, though, Tony. Just us now. Mom and Dad would have wanted us to look after each other. My husband also said he's happy to help you whenever you need. Thanks, Stacy. But I want to try to be uh, independent now, you know? So I'll do my best not to bother you guys too much. Talk to you later. Hi, Stacy. Thank you so much for sending us your vegetables. Hello, Andrea. You are very welcome. How are they? And let me know if I'm sending you too much. The volume is great. We received some more today. Sorry I sent you unpretty ones. No, no, they are delicious. Are they hard to make? I've become interested. Do you want to start your own garden? Well, I don't know if I can grow them as good as you do. But maybe something easy. There are tons of easy ones, and it's really fun to grow plants. If you need help getting started, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. You know, I have this health issue of mine, so I can't work. So I want to do something for Tony. I thought maybe if I grow vegetables, it's healthy and free, so it'll help. Oh, but it must be expensive to buy everything I need to start a garden. I heard from Tony that you guys are struggling to get by. Oh, he told you. We've had to buy new furniture for the house when we moved in. On top of it, the cost of living is getting more and more expensive. 
It really is hard to just live a decent life nowadays. Sorry, I shouldn't be so nosy. But my brother tends to push himself really hard, so I'm very worried. Being financially unstable can be very stressful. It must be hard for you too, Andrea. Oh, no. Compared to what Tony goes through every day, I have it easy. He doesn't know, but I started to work at home. Just a little. Have you? Great. But I've been sick recently, so I'm not making much. I wanted to surprise him by showing him how much I've made, but I don't know when that will be. Aw, Andrea. Stacy, I really shouldn't be asking you this. But do you think you can help us financially? I'm so worried about Tony overworking. I wish I could ask my parents, but they are extremely tough and old-fashioned. If they find out that Tony is not making enough to support me, they might think he's not good enough. I don't mind providing support, but Tony declined my offer the other day. He did? Yes, he said he wanted to be independent as much as possible. He said that? Oh, Tony. He'd be mad to find out that I asked you to support us then. He wouldn't like me asking you. Tony has a very gentle soul. I'm sure he wouldn't get mad. But I'm scared that he'd feel ashamed. Is it possible for you to help us, but keep it a secret? Like I said, I'm happy to support you guys. But this is about money. I think you two should talk about it first. I don't think he'd accept it. He has a side business now and working around the clock. He would say he can pay for the two of us if he works harder. I promise we will pay you back, little by little. So please, I just want Tony to be okay. Maybe just for a little while? Okay, uh, the max I can provide is $500 a month, though. Is that enough? Yes, absolutely! That would allow me to put something a little nicer on the table. I'll wire you the money soon, then. Oh my god, thank you so much! I'll send you my bank account details in a bit. Thank you for taking care of my brother. I'm sorry you have to go through this. I'm happy to be with Tony. That's all that matters to me. I'm glad that I chose him. He's a good person. I'm happy you see that in him. I'm always wishing you two the best luck. Thank you. I will do my very best to support him. <laughs> Hey, Stacy, thanks for yesterday. I was able to chill out for once. Oh, good. I wish you could have stayed longer, though. I know, but I was lucky to even squeeze in some time to see you during a business trip. Next time, I'll take a day off. That would be lovely. Did you get back home? No, not yet. I'm taking a break from driving at the rest stop. I feel so much more alive from eating great home-cooked dinner at your place. <laughs> I really appreciate you, sis. Hey, Tony, you looked like you were tearing up when you were eating. Because your food was that great! I heard you blurt out something like, I haven't had a real meal like this in a while. Is there something you're not telling me? You changed the subject, so I let it go last night, but... I'm worried. It's fine, Stacy. My husband was also worried about you. You seem to have lost a lot of weight. Don't worry. How can I not be worried? What do you usually eat, anyway? I mean, yes, I knew you were coming, so I did go harder on the cooking than I usually do. But Andrea cooks at home, too, doesn't she? Yeah, right she does. And I've been sending my vegetables to you on a regular basis. Is it not enough? Are you still having difficulty getting by? Well, I don't know. Kind of. But I'm okay. Tony, what do you mean by kind of? Things haven't changed at all? Maybe, maybe not. Stop acting stupid. I'm being serious. Stacy, it's my fault. I simply don't make enough to support my family. I need to work harder. You do work hard. Too hard. 
I know it's not nice to be talked to about money, so I'm sorry, but you really need to review your expenses. I know a financial advisor who can help you. Do you have any overdue payments? No, I don't. Okay, good. I said this before, but you have a high-paying job, Tony. I'm having a hard time understanding why you are barely getting by. I'm sorry. What? No! Tony, you don't have to apologize! I'm not scolding you or anything. I'm just trying to understand your situation. I don't know if I can do this anymore. What? What's going on? I've been lying here. About? Andrea. What about Andrea? She's not sick. She doesn't have any condition. She just doesn't want to work, that's all. We've been saying she has health issues, so it doesn't look as bad. The reason why we're having trouble with money is because she's a huge spender. Huh? Are you saying she's using all your money? She's changed so much since we got married. She's been calling me an ATM for the past half year or so. I try to talk to her, but it's too late. What's too late? I can't disobey her. Why? You should leave her. But the vow, we promised till death do us part. And I feel awful for everyone who celebrated our marriage. We even pitched in for our wedding fee. What am I supposed to say to everyone? If you don't love her, then what's the point? I don't know what's right or wrong anymore. I think I'm losing my mind. I've been so busy just trying to please her. Listen to me, Tony. First, you need to take a break from work. But I have so much to do. Exactly why you need a break. When I saw you yesterday, I could barely recognize you. You were standing there like a ghost. I am seriously worried. I'm sorry, Stacy. I should be old enough to take care of myself. I feel ashamed. Don't be. What you need to do right now is head back to my place immediately. You will tell me everything that's happened and rest. Hi, Andrea. Do you have a minute? Hi, Stacy. I was just about to message you. I can't get a hold of Tony. Is he still in the hospital like you said? Unfortunately, yes. He hasn't recovered yet. He needs more time to rest. I see. I'm sorry I'm not there to help. I should have seen this coming. He's been working day and night. I wasn't able to support him enough, even though you've given so much. Yes, I must say I was very surprised. You said you were going to cook decent meals for him, for his health. Instead, Tony has lost 20 pounds. Really? I must not have seen it because I see him every day. I will make nutritious meals for him when he returns. No need. You wouldn't give him any good food, only junk. I'm sorry, what are you talking about? Like weeds growing in your yard, your leftovers? What the hell have you been feeding my brother? I know everything. You've been spending all his money on what you want. I don't know what you're talking about, Stacy. I've never done such a thing. We've been watching you this past week, you know. Waking up at noon every day, ordering delivery, shopping, drinking, eating. How could you use my brother as your ATM? How dare you treat my brother like trash? Why are you so upset? I mean, how else was I supposed to treat him? I can't buy luxury brands with what Tony makes. It's not my fault. Tony should be making more. Excuse me? Clearly, it is your fault. Tony promised me he'd make me the happiest girl. He needs to keep his promise. You are out of your mind. For a married couple to be happy, you need to work together. I married him because he works for a big company. But then I find out after we get married that he makes much less than I had expected. 
Can you imagine how shocked I was? You are not making any sense. I heard that you were abusive, too. You abused my brother, both verbally and physically. Tony has had to go to therapy to get over what you've done to him. What? I thought you said he was in the hospital. I heard he fainted during a business trip. No, he didn't. I made Tony come here so that you could stay away from him. What? You need to get him back here now. He hasn't been home for a week now. I need money. It's almost his payday. Tony is not coming back to you. He is divorcing you. You liar. Let me talk to him. No way. You think you can make him obey you, but the doctor says he's not allowed to come in contact with you. Whatsoever. So no, you can't talk to him. How can we have a divorce without speaking to each other? I mean, if he's not clear-headed, obviously I can't accept. <laughs> How can you laugh at this? You were the one who traumatized him. You stole from me, too. You think you can get away with this? Well, we don't have anything on paper, do we? You lunatic. I've, I've had enough of you. You are paying for all of this. Pay for what, exactly? How you've damaged my brother, of course. We weren't just watching how you spent Tony's money. We know you're having an affair. Better yet, your guy is also married, so it's a double affair. I wonder what would happen if we let his wife know about this. I'm not having an affair. Yes, you are. I know you meet him at a hotel. You hide it well, but we've asked professionals to watch your every move. We have the proof of your infidelity. Wait, you're showing that to his wife? Yes, and we are considering to show your parents, too. You said they were tough. I wonder how they would react. I mean, you've been stealing, abusing, having an affair. This is going to be fun. Stop it. You can't show my parents. They are the real abusive ones. Oh, so you can abuse my brother, but you can't be abused? You've kicked him and thrown things at him. How could you? I will make a formal apology to Tony. Just please don't show my parents. I'm begging you, Stacy. On my knees. What you need to do first is agree to divorce Tony and compensate for his suffering. Compensate? You mean pay? I don't have any savings. I can't pay anything. You bought a lot of nice things, I hear. Why don't you sell those? I'm sure it'll give you a good start. But I like them. I would hate to lose them. Then I will go ahead and talk to your parents now. I will somehow make money. I will work and pay you back little by little. So please don't tell my parents. How am I supposed to believe you? You've been full of lies all this time. I'm being honest this time. Please believe me. No, sorry, you've gone too far. In fact, I've already done what I needed to do. Huh? What do you mean? Your parents should be arriving at your doorstep in a minute. They've seen the proof already. Now it's time to face what you've done. No, how could you? Please tell me you're joking. Stacy, you have to tell them that you were wrong, that it was all a mistake. Wrong about what? I have nothing to correct. No one has your back anymore. You are getting what you deserve. You hurt my family. Now you're paying for it. Tony and Andrea's divorce was filed shortly after. She agreed to the divorce relatively quickly as she had enough battering by her furious parents. Turns out, her parents really did treat Andrea rough as she grew up. It was the only truth that ever came out of her mouth. I feel bad that she had a tough childhood, but that doesn't give her the excuse to do what she did to me and my brother. Her parents, tough as they may be, were apologetic of the situation and paid me back, as well as consolation to my brother. The proof was also sent to the family of the man Andrea was having an affair with. I can only imagine what kind of drama that went on their side. 
Now in debt to her parents, I hear that Andrea is working day and night and under strict surveillance. My brother's friend saw her once. He said that she looked nothing like before, having lost a lot of weight. That doesn't make me feel bad at all, though, because that's exactly what she did to my brother. I have no idea how much money she must earn to make up to her parents, but I hope as she does, Andrea is able to realize and understand why she was wrong. On the other hand, my brother has recovered well. He gained his weight back and looks much happier. Reflecting back, he doesn't understand why he had let himself be a slave to Andrea. I later found out that Andrea wasn't even feeding him the vegetables that I had sent. She would throw them away and only allowed him to eat whatever she felt like permitting. My brother felt awful and wanted to avoid hurting my feelings. That was why he kept it a secret. He knew about how her parents treated Andrea, so it's my assumption that he felt bad for her at the beginning. But soon, he became brainwashed into thinking he had to obey her. Andrea took advantage of Tony's kindness, and he let her take control of him. Tony flourished at work after getting a divorce. He enjoys his career more than ever. I will always be worried about my little brother, but I trust he'll be fine. He's been through a lot, but he's a strong guy. As his only sibling, I'll continue to look out for him. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.